Kicking Timberwolves. All right, this week we are doing bread. Bread is probably one of my all time favorite things to make. Um, before I was gluten free, I would make lots of bread, experimented with lots of different things, but bread dough is just so fun to work with. Um, now, if you've never made bread before, it's really, really easy. Um, for this demo, I'm going to be doing artisan bread. And honestly, the biggest thing about artisan bread or about bread in general is just to let it sit long enough for it to rise properly. Um, for this recipe, you're actually going to use the fridge for that as well. Um, so if you are planning on making bread, don't do it where uh, you have like an hour to go to a meal and you want to make a loaf of bread. <laughs> Typically does not work like that. Um, yeast takes a while and so this does take several hours so there's going to be different parts to this film because I'm going to want to show you guys what it looks like but um, with any yeast type of products whenever we put it together what you're looking for is a dough that doubles in size uh, and then you're going to break it and or bake it not break it uh, and then break it open and just enjoy oh my gosh homemade bread is the best um, so uh, for this recipe again what you will need is instant yeast okay so please make sure that you've got that. Um, you cannot do another substitute for that for this recipe, okay? So if you do not have yeast at home, maybe you should be doing the soda bread. Um, one, the other thing you're gonna want is a uh, something to cook it in. Now, the original recipe for this uh, called for a Dutch oven, which if those of you guys don't know, it's, it's basically like a cast iron uh, pot that works really, really well, it's even heat. Um, but typically when I bake bread, I use my cast iron. Now. If you do not have a cast iron, just take a piece of parchment and put it on a baking pan and you will be fine. You'll be good to go, okay? Um, let's get going. Again, this comes together super, super quick. If you guys have a KitchenAid mixer, you can actually use your um, dough hook. Um, here, let me show you. This little handy dandy thing. Um, and it comes together even faster. I am going to be making this with good old fashioned uh, rubber spatula. Um, so you can easily do this at home even without the kitchen egg mixer. All right, here's your recipe. And as always, I'm gonna start by washing my hands and making sure that I wash them for 20 seconds in hot water. here and away I go okay so um, this recipe does call for 800 milliliters or three cups and a quarter of um, flour it's a lot of flour I get it um, but it does make one full loaf or two smaller ones um, so it does make quite a bit okay um, as far as how you measure that goes because I've already measured it into my bowl here what I would do is do um, three of the 250s and then one of the 50, okay? And I heat some level off, and I'm good to go. The next thing um, that I'm gonna do is basically gonna put all of my dry ingredients in together. And of course, I've got all my equipment out as well. Um, and I'll be using a whisk for this. So I've got my 800 milliliters of flour in here. To that, I'm gonna add in 10 milliliters of yeast. So I'm gonna take my five and I'm gonna measure that. And typically for my yeast, I keep it in the freezer when I store it, um, just because it is a live thing. And um, it usually stays fresher longer that way, and then you don't have to keep on replacing it if your yeast does not work. Now, if you have really, really old yeast, um, and this does not rise, you can still eat your loaf of bread, um, but you're gonna wanna um, replace it. And if you don't know if your yeast is old, what I would do is I would test a little bit of it. So I would take some warm water, I would put some yeast in there, I would give it a little um, stir with a fork. And then if it doesn't start bubbling and it doesn't start feeding, okay, where it kind of rises to the top and it kind of almost looks like, like a mushroom top, um, then your yeast might be dead, okay? Uh, but again, I'm good, this is pretty fresh, and I do store it into my freezer. With this though, I'm actually gonna put 10 milliliters of salt, which sounds like a lot, okay? But you do not taste it, trust me. Um, typically, 
bread, um, you usually have just like bread, water, and salt. And actually, if you were to do it like totally and absolutely um, how they used to do it in ancient times, or even how a lot of people do it still in the world, you'd actually use air to ferment your bread. Um, and so air would actually allow for uh, pockets to grow, and that's how you would actually use it as like a leavener, okay? So I'm gonna do 10 milliliters of salt. So two fives once again. I am then going to take my whisk and I'm gonna whisk it all together. I'm done with my whisk, okay? So say goodbye to the whisk. I have hot water, or warm, sorry, not hot. I have warm water that I've measured out here. And again, it is 375 milliliters. So what I would do is I would do, if you've only got it like a one cup liquid measure, um, I would do 250 plus 125, okay? And you do wanna make sure it's warm because we wanna activate the yeast, but do not make sure, or make sure it's not hot or else you'll kill the yeast, okay? And for this, we're actually not gonna use any sugar. Um, this is just like a basic bread recipe and I swear it's so, so good. Even though it's only got, what, four ingredients? awesome okay so I'm going to take this and I'm going to add it to my um, flour mixture just slowly stirring as I go and I'm just going to take my river spatula um, and just get the size just to start making a dough now I do not want to like really do a huge mix at this point because I don't want to over activate my gluten. Okay. So I have stirred it all in. I am going to give it a couple stirs just to make sure that all of the dry um, is really well mixed in with the wet. And this is going to start to form a dough. And my hands are clear, okay? And I'm gonna start getting my hands in there. Now, I do not need to put this onto a floured surface to knead it or anything like that. I am just gonna lightly knead this within my bowl. And what I'm gonna notice is that it's a really soft and pliable dough. And if I've got a lot of like dry stuff still here, okay? I'm actually gonna add a little bit more liquid just to make sure that it sticks together because I want it to be like a more of a sticky dough than how dry it is right now. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more water. And I'm just gonna pour it into the edges here in small amounts at a time, please. And just mix it in. And basically what I'm going for is just for it to stick together. All right, so I've got my ball here. <laughs> As you can see, it's really, really stretchy. It's really, really pliable. Maybe I'll add a little bit more. Again, I mean, the amount of water that you guys add totally depends on the weather depends on your flour, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so I've got a good dough here. So what I'm actually gonna do then is I'm gonna take my olive oil and I gave you guys the measurement of five milliliters. What I'm gonna do though is I'm actually gonna spray down my uh, second bowl. So I've got another large bowl here and I'm actually gonna spray mine down with olive oil as well, but I've got a canned spray of it. So when you put your olive oil in it, you're gonna mix it, it's so a four milliliters, you're gonna put it in and then you're just gonna basically make sure that it's all over the sides because you do not want your bread to stick to anything or else it won't rise properly. So I'm gonna grab my dough. I'm gonna transfer it. Get a good amount there. And then I'm actually gonna take, if you have your leftover olive oil, you're gonna take it and you're gonna drizzle it. But again, I'm gonna take my spray and I'm just gonna spray it down. And that's gonna make sure that I don't have any dry spots. I don't have anything that kind of dries out. Okay? 
So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap or a towel. Um, I typically, for this recipe, use plastic wrap and I actually make sure that it's sealed um, just so that the yeast can really start to grow. And you can put it on your counter um, for two to three hours. Typically with this recipe, um, I do two hours. It's, it works pretty well. It's not gonna fully double in size at this point. Um, after the two hours, that's when you're gonna put it into the fridge, like straight into the fridge for another three hours. Um, and then it will double, okay? It sounds so weird to add cold, but you can actually do a cold rise, which is what this recipe uses, okay? But for now, I'm gonna cover this and I am going to put it onto my stove top because that's typically where I let things rise. Um, and I'll see you back later.